What's up guys? Welcome back for another quad vlog. I hope all you guys had a great week. I know I missed last week's video after I told you guys I was going to try to upload more consistently every Saturday, but I really don't have an excuse. I, I, I just didn't upload a video last Saturday. However, I think today's video will maybe make up for, uh, you know, me missing last week's video. Right now we're headed to the dealership on the Raptor 700 because at the dealership they have demo days for Indian motorcycles. And I know it's kind of a quad vlog. I guess it's well, it won't be a quad vlog really, but um, I'm going to try to go test ride the new Indian FTR 1200. And if we can't test drive the FTR 1200, I'm gonna try to test drive the Indian Scout. And that's kind of like a more bobber style motorcycle. Um, not like too big. I don't I don't really like big, you know, big cruiser, uh, like road glide sty uh, style bikes. I'm just too small of a guy for like a six, 700 pound motorcycle. So I'm gonna try to stick with kind of a, a smaller bike to test drive. Oh crap, I forgot I'm on the quad and not the bike and we can't take the interstate on the quad so crap i guess i'm gonna have to turn around and kind of take the back way actually wait a minute i think i know how to go this way without taking the interstate anyway so yeah i think i'm gonna throw a picture up on the screen of the bike that i want to test drive and that's the ftr 1200 so look for the picture of the bike on the screen right now i think it looks pretty sick yeah, like i said i think it looks almost like a ducati style uh bike which i think you know i mean i'm not gonna like not like a ducati and i was gonna ride the triumph daytona to the dealership because you know obviously we're test driving a motorcycle but uh when i went to start the triumph up it didn't even start it just like i heard it click on and the fuel pump just like moan and groan and i was like oh boy it's definitely not gonna start the battery's totally dead and sure enough it didn't start look at that big hawk up there holy crap um but yeah, it just didn't start, so I had to jump on the quad. Ugh. It literally smells like sweaty feet. I am like, I've never smelled that smell unless my socks are off. <laughs> like, I don't know what the heck that is. And here we are. Looks kind of busy, honestly. Do they have the bike I want, though? I don't see it. They definitely don't have it. That sucks. Looks like they have plenty of scouts though. <sighs> well guys, I went in there, told them I wanted to ride the FTR, <laughs> and it actually doesn't even come out till, doesn't even come out till March. So they don't even have the bike. Um, so basically I'm riding a scout, which is pretty much the only other bike I wanted to ride anyway. But it looks like we have a super nice Ninja here. This thing is sick. FC10. That's a nice bike too. So yeah, apparently it doesn't even come out till March. I don't know. Maybe I'll come back and try to ride it then. Fun fact, this dealership like advertises on Facebook all the time. And the only ads they've been running are for these stupid Jeeps. Like $18,000 for one of these things. Like granted, it, it, I mean, it kind of looks cool and unique. And it's like based off the, I guess the old like Willys platform or whatever. But eighteen thousand dollars for this thing no way and i'm pretty sure they're always advertising for them because no one wants to buy these things like anyways i just wanted to tell you guys that because i think it's hilarious that all they're doing is just advertising these trying to get rid of them and they literally can't get rid of them i feel like they'd be pretty top heavy too tip easy and they just look cheap honestly they don't even look that like nice of quality like we, there's some rhino lining in here but like this pedal like i don't know they just look cheap to me. For 18 grand, they must be making bank off these. I doubt these like cost any more than like 5,000 to produce. And if you guys know something that I don't about those like Jeeps, let me know in the comments below because I'm definitely hating on them. I apologize if any of you have one, but I just think they're overpriced. Ooh, but this Raptor though. Ooh, clean. Not really though. This thing is beat. <laughs> oh, it looks like they just came back. And I think that's the one I'm gonna be riding, that black one right there. Oh, all right. 
Where's the damn key? All right, here's the key. Here's a key. All right. Do you have to pull in the clutch or no? No, you don't even have to pull in the clutch. It sounds, sounds halfway decent. So I was looking up some specs about these bikes. I think it's a 68 or 69 cubic inch engine. It's like 1130 some cc's. But it has 100 horsepower. Um, and 75, I think, foot-pounds of torque. It's quite a bit of torque. Yeah, yeah. Take up the rear, I guess. Oh, this thing is like a... Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that, but I'm so used to riding a sport bike that I uh, I put my like feet like back instead of uh, forward. Oh! So smooth. Oh, it's actually okay. Okay, okay. There's that 70 whatever foot pounds of torque. It's actually pretty dang quick. We're in third gear um, at 42, 4,000 RPMs. Okay, it only has five gears. Online it said, uh, online it said it, it was a six speed. So I guess it's not a six speed, it only has five gears, which is fine. So we're in fifth gear going about 55 miles an hour right now. And uh, oh, we're gonna have a, a little suspension test it looks like. All right, let's see. Let's see if it's better than the Triumph Daytona. Oh yeah, definitely better than the Triumph Daytona at handling bumps, that's for sure. It handles honestly pretty good. Like, I mean, again, I'm riding a cruiser, so this is like totally different for me. I'm totally used to just driving a sport bike and having like such nimble handling and just like a flick of the wrist throws the bike, but this isn't, this isn't too bad. It's just, it's just a different feel, you know? The transmission is super smooth. The clutch engagement, really smooth. Like you don't feel like the bike is gonna like bark at you if you, screw up a shift or anything it's 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 pretty forgiving so far oh yeah it's quick it's pretty quick the only thing I got to say about the power and the power delivery is that it really gets up to the higher rpms quickly you know it, it doesn't have a very high red line and so you know you got to shift pretty quick I mean you can you know floor it and it, it goes but um, it just doesn't ring out as much as like an inline four or something. I really gotta nail down how comfortable it is. The bike is super comfortable. The seat is great. Riding position is great. Like, I feel like I could literally ride this all day long. You know, my back position's in a good spot. My hands feel good. Got really no complaints about comfort at all. The ride is really smooth. I mean, it absorbs the bumps pretty darn well. You, I mean, you guys saw when we went over that railroad track, railroad track, here's another one. I mean, it really doesn't launch you up into the air like you know, other bikes do. I mean, it just takes it like a car does, pretty much. And you got all that power down low. This bike is such a different feel to me because of the rake of, uh, this bike is so much, so much more than a sport bike. You know, sport bikes are a lot more vertical. Their forks are a lot more vertical than a typical cruiser is. And so that affects the handling a lot, but it makes the ride a lot more comfortable and smooth as well. Very smooth. Gearbox is like butter. Can find neutral super easy. That's, I can always appreciate that because sometimes my Daytona doesn't find neutral very well. Apparently, I'm not quite sure what Redline is because I just hit 6,500 RPMs. I might have looked something up wrong on the internet. <laughs> I might have. I'll correct myself on the screen, but it definitely, uh, that's definitely up there because I could feel the engine kind of, kind of scream at me when I was going that high. And I missed the shift. You guys probably saw that as well. <laughs> it slipped into neutral instead of going into second. 
I can tell the best cruising speed slash like RPM for this motorcycle is definitely in between like three and four thousand. It really likes that. Doesn't shake at all, doesn't vibrate, it's just really smooth between those RPMs. I'll be honest, I like the motorcycle. I mean, it's kind of fun to ride. It's really comfortable. All right, so I think we got a few minutes of riding left. I want to finish up the ride talking about the motorcycle. Overall, I really like the bike. Obviously, it's a very stripped down motorcycle. I mean, my 2007 Triumph Daytona has more, you know, instruments and, uh, you know, gizmos on it than this bike. It's a very simple motorcycle. It has an engine, uh, a speedometer, and a tack. That's pretty much what you're, what you're getting with this bike. But... That's really all you need on a motorcycle like this. I mean, this motorcycle is just stripped down. It's just built to ride. That's about it. Oh my God. I'm putting my foot down where I would on my Triumph again. <laughs> so embarrassing. Where the hell is the kickstand? Okay, here it is. Little short guy. Oop. Nice. Nice. You know guys, one thing I think I forgot to mention is this bike is liquid cooled versus all the other ones look to be air cooled. It looks like they have an oil cooler, but uh, it does not, I don't think they have radiators. So this is liquid cooled, which, I mean, let's be honest, I would definitely prefer over an air cooled engine. Alright, well I guess I lied to all of you guys throughout the whole video. This is Indian Scout 60. And it has 78 horsepower instead of, I guess the other one has the 100 horsepower. So this is the Indian Scout 60, and it does have a 5-speed. Alright, let's go down this road and see why it was actually closed and why we couldn't go down it. Because I'm betting we can get through. I didn't want to get uh, take any chances when I was going to uh, the dealership because I didn't want to get slowed down in case it actually was closed. But it looks like we can get through. So I guess that's why it's closed. No problem. Oh crap. <laughs> Here's another one. You know what? I'm just gonna go. That's a lot easier. Alright guys, I'm going to finish up this video. Overall, I really enjoyed riding the Indian Scout 60 and I apologize again for pretty much lying to you guys before uh, I found out really what the bike was. It has 78 horsepower and I'll correct the torque number on the screen and it only does have a 5 speed transmission. But that being said, it actually did feel like a 100 horsepower motorcycle. It actually had quite a bit of power and I was really impressed with um, how it delivered that power. It was really smooth and I talked to the guy and it actually does have the same final drive. I don't know personally if I would be in the market for buying that specific motorcycle just because of the price tag it comes with with uh, what you get when you buy the motorcycle. It's, it's pretty bare bones honestly but if you like you know Indian motorcycles and the heritage and the history the name uh, comes with you know I would definitely check out that motorcycle because it is a nice bike it is very comfortable like I've been saying the whole video it's literally like riding a uh, it's literally like riding a recliner down the road all right guys I think this is where I'm gonna wrap the video up if you enjoyed it and you enjoyed seeing the Indian Scout 60 drop me a like and subscribe below and as always I will see you guys hopefully next Saturday for another quad vlog